So you have your schedule, but you don't know what to draw on it. It happens to me all the time. Today, I'm gonna show you a few ideas of some things you can easily make that are either gonna spark your creativity and be a starting point, or are just gonna leave you deeply satisfied by making them. They're gonna be awesome and they're gonna look beautiful. Hi, I'm Paula, welcome to my channel. I'm a full-time artist and let's get started. Here's my brand new sketchbook I'm gonna to use today and I've been itching to play with. I'm going to start with watercolors in the most satisfying way I can think of right now, which is painting watery rainbow stripes. I'm not even gonna worry about the shape of the stripes or their direction. I'm just using my watercolors in a very self-pleasing way. I did start my rainbow with pink, don't kill me. I just felt like using that color. And of course you could do that too, just paint stripes in any colors you feel like using. This is about enjoying your creative time. I'm really watering down my watercolors to allow them to flow and mix with each other even though I'm painting on dry paper. And after enjoying this little moment of freedom, this is how my stripes end up looking. There was no plan really, so this is how they dried up and as you can see there, there are stains that I wasn't planning on having. And here, I'm gonna be totally honest with you, in that moment, those round stains bothered me so much that I was going to tear this first page out, pretend like it didn't happen, and start over. But then I took a deep breath, literally, <laughs> and realized it's okay, and maybe I should at least try to see it all the way through before having an artistic tantrum. With every single thing I make, paint, or create, I always have a point, a moment, where a little voice in me says, let's start over, this is not good, it's awful. Always. But of course, with experience, I now manage that feeling better, and now I kinda half-heartedly whisper to myself, trust the process, and I just carry on. So in this case, breathe, regroup, and follow your first instinct, which for me was to outline that weird thing that ruined my beautiful flowy stripes. It sort of looks organic, even like a coral or something. It doesn't really matter what it looks like. I outlined it and thought I could use it somehow. Then I outlined every other color, which actually just meant doing lines vertically. And when I was done with that, I and using my thicker pen, I went ahead and made some lines in between the thicker ones. And see, I accepted the thing that went wrong and a minute later I'm truly enjoying the process and feeling super relaxed by drawing these lines. At the end, this is my result and I think it looks really, really nice. And it was so deeply satisfying to make. And you know what? Sometimes when I play like this in my sketchbook, I am very surprised with the end result and how this could actually be a print they sell somewhere if you just blow up the scale. Anyhow, second idea to fill your sketchbook and this one uh, really helps you to relax. It's very centangle inspired, but it can also look very artsy. I started by drawing a cluster of three petals that almost look like little hearts, and you can draw it in the middle of the page or you can do it off center like I did. After that, you just draw more petals around the three, making them larger as you go out. To elevate the idea for this page, I'm gonna color the drawing. You could do it all in the same color, use two colors and alternate them, or do something like I did with a gradient. I wanted to create my gradient in all yellows, but I didn't have enough colors in my alcohol marker set. So I took a big jump from the toasted yellow into red, and I actually love how it looks. When you're done coloring all of your petals, all you have to do is draw little lines inwards on all of them. And because this is a very fast time lapse, you cannot tell that all of my lines have different rhythms to them. Some are curvy, some are wiggly, but it doesn't really matter at the end. I think it looks good. Remember today, we are exploring ideas that are pretty, but mostly satisfying to make. It looks so pretty that it almost looks like it took me longer than it did, but it didn't. This is fast and nice. I just drew lines and because my lines were in fact created so effortlessly, in some places I went outside the lines. So I just went ahead and uh, went over the borders with a thicker pen and that's the final result. Idea number three, and this one is the easiest one I think, but the results are so pretty. As I painted this, I thought it would be wonderful to get larger rolls of paper, larger paintbrushes, and make wrapping paper like this. 
I very quickly was able to draw some flowers and if you saw I started them by drawing an asterisk and then I just spread the paint a little bit further to create more of the roundness of the petals. That was it. I just added a few blotches of paint to act as leaves and let it dry. Once it was dry, I started with this flower here and for my center I just did a cluster of little circles. And then a simple little flower, like the ones you do at grade school around the paint stains. To make it fancier, I drew the flower again but the second time you offset the lines, make them a little bit more angular and play with the thickness of the stroke. I did that for a third time just playing around with my marker and this flower doodle now looks super elevated, right? I love, love, love playing with line with them using micron pens. This makes for a much more interesting composition and it truly adds interest to simple drawings. I had fun with the centers of the rest of the flowers, playing with them and trying different things. And after literally five minutes of play, this satisfying page is done. Number four. For this one, I'm filling my page with circles. I just traced around a little scotch tape I had, simple, simple. The idea is to paint them a solid color with watercolor and then add little drops of a different color to see how it dries and have that satisfying play. Now, because I create all of my videos on my phone, I sometimes forget I have to check if I'm in frame, so I didn't notice I was working off camera. So, I guess we'll just start with the second row of circles. I will tell you though that the first row was all purple because I really like gradients and the following row is gonna be blue and then green like that. Same process for all 12 circles, painting the whole thing with a very watered single color and then just adding drops of a different color to experiment. Once my circles were dry, I did go ahead and erase some of the pencil lines because they were bothering me and it was time to play with this one. I just tried a different thing on each circle and I'm playing with lines, dots and basic elements of drawing. You can see for example how I use line in different ways. Maybe it's diagonal, maybe it's vertical, maybe I'm using lines and mixing it with dots. Same elements used in different ways. Here I'm filling one completely with little circles. It's a really fun process and another thing you can do is combine two of the elements you used before. For example here I'm combining the lines I used in one circle with the dots I used in another. Just have fun with it. Do whatever you want. And again with this one when I finished I see this thing as potentially being an art print sold somewhere. Is it just me? I, I think this could be art prints. Anyhow, number five. For this one, I switched to a flat brush and I'm only doing squiggly lines in any direction. Again, I'm just having fun. Let those dry and I'm going to use the same color and paint some leaves on top. It's a very nice process to paint something simple and monochromatic. You don't have to worry about composition as much and just enjoy painting. This is one I wanted to do to show you that you can create with the most limited supplies. One brush, one color, and water. I did the 100 day project the first time with a sketchbook, two brushes, and five watercolors. Didn't even really have a space to create, but that was my day one as an artist and I'm so happy I did it. So choose one color and go for it. You, you could fill page after page of monochromatic ideas. And if you only have 10 minutes, this is something you can create and leave satisfied with your creativity and your soul nourished. Number six. Okay, this, this is one of my favorites because you use what you're feeling. I was feeling a little frustrated when I did this, so that's what that first line was. Sometimes trying to be a content creator can be hard and it's complicated to describe the exact trigger and feeling I had that day, because of course I'm not really connected to that emotion right now, but I can say that putting so many hours into making content that something just does not perform as you think is something you have to deal with emotionally. You put a lot of yourself and your passion into creating and maybe it does not come back to you as engagement or as, I don't know, maybe it's just not well received and because it's so personal, it feels not great. <laughs> In any case, this is a nice idea because you can put your emotions onto the paper and it will help you process and release them. Once you have a bunch of wiggly lines that are supposed to intersect in various places, you have to turn those intersections into round corners. Let me show you a close-up so you can see how you do that. And you make them round and you fill them up somehow. 
there's actually scientific studies about this type of art, which is called neurographical art. And I cannot tell you how it works. I'm no scientist. I don't know the science behind it, but there's something about the rounding that triggers your brain into feeling better and you get rid of the pressure or negative emotions. So I really love this exercise. I've seen a lot of examples in which it seems like you are supposed to draw circles on top of the lines to complete the neurological process. Again, I'm not sure of what this means or what the science behind it is. I just know I've done it many times and it works. There's something super satisfying about rounding up the corners and playing with the thickness and value of all those lines. I could actually do this all day long. I love playing with these lines, but at one point I decided I was happy enough with it to stop and add color because you can add color if you want. And here again, I brought in my watercolors and for this one, I decided to use neutrals because I thought this one too, if you blow it up, would be so cool as wall art. And if you're ever interested in me showing you ideas on how to paint easy abstracts for your home, let me know. I would love to do that. I would love to do a video on that. But in the meantime, here it is blown up and reimagined in a mock-up as it would look in a space as a piece of beautiful art you can make. Tell me that's not gorgeous. Here's my next idea. And this one I've never made before, but I've seen a lot of videos. So I was really wanting to do it. Reverse painting, is it? Negative painting? I don't know what it's called. For this one, I wanted to use my page like a Polaroid almost. So I taped out a square and did a little gradient with colors. But once it dried, I thought it was a little flat. So I added more color to it. Dry it again. So time to draw. I've seen this one with circles, but because I love hearts. Do you know this? I love hearts. I drew hearts, drew them all over my square and then painted around them with a darker color. I'm using paints gray. Uh, it's kind of blue, kind of gray. I love it. For this one, I did use a heating gun to speed up the process of drying in between all of these layers. First layer done. So now you draw a second batch of intersecting hearts and you paint all around the hearts again, all of them. First and second layer don't cover any of the hearts. And I have to tell you, it looks so bad at the beginning that again, I was hit by the need to trash it and cover it with black paint. But again, I calmed myself down and trusted the experience and carried on. And as I did carry on, I started to see progress and it was getting a little bit better with every single layer. So, okay, it was looking nicer. By the last layer, it was looking very, very nice. So I just accentuated that layer again by painting exactly on top to make it a little bit darker. Erase the lines from the last layer of the hearts I drew and I think the end result was really nice. Now that I'm looking at it again um, while editing, maybe for another one I could add some gold lines or details to some of the hearts to make it more interesting. I don't know. I think all of these ideas will allow you to play a little bit and this play will help your creativity spark. You can see mine was already sparking. I painted this and immediately I started thinking, what happens if I do bigger hearts, smaller hearts, different colors? What happens if I add details at the top? What happens if I do this on canvas? So they are certainly satisfying, but I think my biggest take or the biggest thing I want to give you with this video is starting points for your creative juices to flow. Last idea, and I wasn't going to do this one, but because I was so pumped about the hearts, I just felt like creating a little bit more. All you have to do is create some stains around your page with any color. I'm using yellow, but of course it could be orange, green, or whatever. Once you have all of these beautiful watercolor stains around the page, leave a little space in the center. You bring a marker, a pen or whatever, and draw a trunk going up to the leaves, meaning two parallel lines. Mine, because of the angle of how I place my paint, is going to look kind of like it's coming from a weird angle coming from below, but it's okay. It still, it would still work. So I continue drawing some branches, having fun with it, doing a lot of squiggly lines. And I even outlined some of the paint stains for them to look a little bit more like leaves. And that's it. Just like that, the easiest painting of a tree ever. And again, this idea, take it to canvas and imagine how beautiful that can be. With that, I want to show you everything we made today. Of course, we have our tree, our negative painting heart thing that sparked so many ideas for me. We made this beautiful abstract that you could actually paint in any color. We also made a very relaxing blue drawing with leaves. And we made the circles, which are super great to use to develop ideas, come up with patterns, um, come up with mar new markings. It's really, really good for your brain. 
We also made this large flower thing to de-stress and fill a whole page beautifully. These sketchy flowers that I think will be amazing as wrapping paper and maybe that's something I'll do for Christmas this year. Wouldn't that be nice? And last but not least, the rainbow that we made at the beginning with all of the lines. Okay, that's it. This is how I would spend a beautiful day playing in my sketchbook and getting a lot done. I really hope you like this video since it's so different. Sometimes I have so many ideas of what content I want to share with you, but I'm a little bit afraid that you don't like it. <laughs> so if you have any feedback, comment below. I don't mind. Whatever you think is fine. I like knowing what you like. And if you did like this video, maybe you'll like the other one that I'm putting here, which shares my tips to fill a whole sketchbook. I filled so many sketchbooks in my day. So in that video, I show you pages of my sketchbooks and give you some tips on how you can do the same. With that, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. And I hope you're having the most wonderful day. Bye.